Hedgehog, Emma Frost, and a Sonic Chick X-Men, and a bunch of other wonderful, fun things that I've had the privilege of voicing over the years. And I can pass it off to you, darling. I haven't been in all those things. Um, I, uh, I'm DC Douglas. Uh, I, um, I am known for Legion and Mass Effect uh, trilogy, uh, trilogy uh, Albert Wesker in nine games for 12 years. Uh, you don't seem to care about that, so let's move on to anime. Um, oh, I have been uh, Honkai Star Rail as Farag. All right, a lot of uh, Honkai fans here. I'm losing it! Um, and, uh, all right, One Piece, X Drake. I know we'd find something. Oh, and Toadie's Bizarre Adventure as uh, Yoshikai Kakira. How you doing, everybody? Uh, okay, I'm a London boy, Craig Fairbrass. Original voice of Ghost, Gaz, and Warcraft in Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3, Battlefield. And now I'm currently being seen as Chef Zef in the live action One Piece. Beautiful show, lovely people. But let me just say, what a fantastic turnout. Proud of you. Thank you. Guys, if, uh, I know there's going to be a lot of questions coming up. If anybody wants to ask a question, I want you to come line up next to me. Don't be shy. I just spilled his coffee. I just spilled his coffee, it wasn't him. While we're, while we're getting lined up, I'm gonna ask a question. So, how many people, and this may not be true for the age we have, but a lot of old people like me, Pokemon was one of the first things that like made you realize that there was a whole anime world out there. How much was gateway drug Pokemon? Right here, 60 of them, I just wanted to ask. That is very important to the evolution of our industry because Pokemon was the cartoon that made us know that anime was out there. So thank you. Hey, what's your name? Duncan, what's your question? Who is your favorite One Piece character, but you can't choose yourself? Chef Zef, of course. So I watched the live action One Piece with my family, um, with my son and my husband. My daughter didn't watch it, she's so busy doing other things, but um, we took our time watching it. We watched it so slowly because I was like, the actor's strike was happening and I was like, when am I gonna get to see this again? And we all loved it. And uh, we loved your performance, you were so good. Um, but I'm gonna pass it on to you. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, it's gotta be Brooke, right? It's gotta be Brooke. It's the, character wise, I, I, I love Brooke, but in terms of the English dub voice actor, I love Ian Sinclair as Brooke. That would be my favorite. Um, oh, my turn? Yeah, thank you. Not that I was pre planning this at all, but I'd have to, oh, I don't know, say Luffy! <laughs> I agree. I loved Luffy. I think he was great. And a lovely kid as well. Good actor. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's got such a great quality about him. A very, you know, just a nice kid. Thank you. Hi guys, so quick announcement. Could anyone that's waiting around here, just please don't block the dealers, if that's okay? So you're more than welcome to stand around and wait, but please try your best not to block the dealers on the right hand side. So thank you guys. Hi, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew, what's your question? Who's the hardest character you had to voice in your career? Ooh, okay. Um, I'm gonna answer this two different ways because there's the vocal and then there's the um, mental, right? Uh, vocally, believe it or not, it was not Luffy, it was Waba Fett. That one really was a doozy. There's a doozy on my voice because it wasn't just me. I was taking over for Casey Rogers, so I had to do her version of Wava Fett, which was very difficult on my vocal cords, I gotta be honest. Um, as far as difficult, like, mentally, probably Blaze the Cat, um, but I feel like the result was really good because, well, not, I was say good, it was um, layered. 
we had a lot of chefs in the kitchen, as, as, as the case would be. A lot of people giving input is a wonderful thing when they're all saying the same thing. When they're saying different things, as an actor, you have to figure out how do I make person A happy, person B, person C, person D, and honor the performance and honor the character description. So that was the most difficult for Blaze, but once I figured it out, I felt really, really good about it. So, and I'll pass it on to... Uh, my movie for, anybody know uh, Ultraman? The show? There you go, you're awake, I like it. Um, so I did a, a character called Ido, and um, the when I got the audition, it was the, the Japanese that they sent me the file to to listen to, and in that voice, they they in the uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it in the engineering of it, they would sl they would slow his voice down and then speed it up and then slow it down, and I'm like, oh, so they'll do this in post, and I email back and I go, I assume you do that in post, and they email back and they go, no, actually, they don't want you to do that in the session, <laughs> and I'm like, but you could do that in um, so I had to learn how to do this with my voice while I was talking to you and make it make sense and not be just one rhythm and so for all my, yeah it was and also fit the timing of the Japanese lines um, so that was uh, it was a challenge and I really thought I should have gotten a, a behind the, the voice actor award uh, for that anyway <laughs> did you? hey hey I, I, I was you know, I was the alien that started the whole I was the big villain at the end yeah so I've been very lucky None of mine are hard, because it's usually they just want me to do my voice. So, <laughs> and I'm not as talented as these three guys who could do the, the whole range, so I've been very lucky. <laughs> um, in, uh, I did a Dragon Ball character named Garudagarn, who just screams, and then they pitch shift it really low and modulate it. So it was just destroying my voice for several days. But the interesting thing was, he's in the new video game just recently released. And they wanted to bring me back, which was very kind, because any human going, Raw, could be pitch shifted and they would work. It could be any one of you in the thing. But they were very kind, so they were let you do that. I was like, great, can you send me a reference, can, or can you play me back some of the old footage so we can hear? They're like, we have no reference track of it. That was back when Funimation was three quarter inch tape to three quarter inch tape, translated over, played live on the broadcast. There's no digital copy even in existence of that file. They tried to go on YouTube. They couldn't even find anybody like recording it off of their VHS. So they just said, what do you think you did? And I'm like, I remember I really fried my voice badly. And they're like, we'll do that again. And then we'll just make it. <laughs> Great question, thank you. What's your name? Alana. Alana, what's your question? This is for Douglas. Um, how did you come up with the voice for Yoshikage Kira and were there any lines that were like really hard to record? How did you find out which voice? Uh, Yoshikage Kira. How did I come up with the voice and then how did I memorize the lines? But how did you come up with the voice for Yoshikage Kira and were there any like lines that were like tough to record and you had to do a lot of times? Oh, oh, tough to remember. Uh, well, all my, I, I'm, I'm old, so I forget everything after I do it. Um, so, but, uh, so with the voice, actually, it's um, uh, because it's a little different than the Japanese version. Uh, and uh, Mommy is the who does a lot of the uh, voice casting for Bang Zoom, which is what that was through. She, uh, uh, I came in for the first session, and I did it like I wanted to do it in the first take uh, when he's driving the car with the spoiler alert hand um, and t being all sexy. And I did it just like I was a suave guy on a date. And, uh, and then the director, Tony Oliver, thought that she would want the voice done like a lot of the other voices in, in that show. And, uh, and he's like, actually, could you be a little more animated, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, actually, I like that. And I'm like, yes! So I got to keep it all in just in that nice range. And of course, when he gets uh, really uppity, you know, when he's, uh, the ego comes, then he gets a little more up here and like that. And then when he's, you know, then he wants to do battle, then he gets to get up on the mic and talk like that. So it was a very easy, you know, vocal range for me to do. And, uh, and I was just glad that they let us do it. And, you know, Tony Oliver is an amazing director. Um, the the uh, Trying to get the timing right, and then, like, once he clued into what she wanted, then he drove, he found all the good moments throughout that show. That show is so bizarre, ergo the title, um, but I can't tell you that if I remember any of the lines, I just know that 
Um, I just know that his complicated relationship with the hand was funny as heck. I can remember young kids here. Um, the, uh, and then also, it's the cat thing into the plant and the air thing, for those who know. That one blew my mind. So, anyway, thanks for the question. Hi, Ian. What's your question? Thank you. I appreciate there's always a balance between improvisation and what's in the script. How different is that between the various types of products, the games, the live action, and the voiceovers? I guess I'll start a little bit and we can pass it around. So, he was asking about improvisation. Um, so, when we're doing a dub, right? A dub means that it was in another language first, and then it's you know translated into uh, another language. So for dubbing, we have no improv, none whatsoever. We are it's about the flap and the movement of the mouth, and we have to do the exact amount. For prelay, again, we need to get the line at least as is, at least once or twice, and then we can sometimes, depending on the director, play around and improvise and add. You know, sometimes characters get certain traits and writers start writing for certain things that we do in our improv. And then, I, I don't want to hog this, so let's, I, I know you have stuff to say on it too. So, video games is where we get a little more latitude because that is prelay. Prelay just means recorded and then art made for it. Uh, which, so in, in original animation, that's done. You get to do the voice first and they'll animate sometimes after. But in, in get video games, a lot of times we will have some leeway. Because it's like, okay, you have basically three seconds to get the idea of, oh crap, and they let you type 20 different options of what you think that character would say and they'll record them all, but then you have to actually go get the game and play it to find out which of any of your improv lines actually made it in. Um, but, uh, so that's way more fun. And then I was also curious, I was gonna, Craig, how dictated were you on the set of that? Because One Piece is coming from canon and from manga, and did you get to play much in the lines, or was it like, this is this is canon, say it exactly this way? I was gonna say, John, you know, I'm a massive fan of improv stuff, but it all project dependent. I do a lot of movies, a lot of, I do a, 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 a main guy in a franchise of gangster movies. We're on number six at the moment, but if you're doing drugs and you're drunk and you're with strippers in a room, that's all improv. There is no such thing as scripted dialogue, it just dies. So it's, it's all gut instinct stuff. To answer your question with One Piece, Oda, it was so strict. If you said one tiny thing out of line, they'd bring you back. You know, you could sort of try and make it a little bit more natural in the way you delivered it, but very, very strict. Same with the video games, I find there was no room for it at all. So you just had to be really, although I used a lot of Cockney slang in Modern Warfare, uh, the Call of Duty games, and they loved it. I sort of slipped it in, you know what I mean? They was like, oh, because he was a London fella, you know. Um, but no, that's the, it's project dependent, I think. I, uh, I do, uh, my, my bread and butter is from voiceover, but I uh, came to LA to be an on-camera actor. I do not have a career, as is a lovely career I wish I had, but I do movies occasionally, and they're so bad, um, and they're so low budget, that I get to improv a lot. Um, and so, you might have, so I just somebody yesterday recognized me from Aquarium of the Dead. If you want to see a movie about zombie fish in an aquarium, that's the one to see. Um, and uh, the beauty is, is I got to like redo almost all our lines. Me and this other actor, we rimmed a lot of the scenes together. So it was all, kind of, as long as it still made sense, they let us roll with it. So um, yeah, anyway, so but everything else they said, cosign. I do want to say that is my favorite zombie fish movie of all the zombie fish movies. It really is. It's, it's, it's iconic. It's canon. Great question. Hi, what's your name? I'm just going to move the mic closer to you. Hello. Elliot, what's your question? How much money have you made in your career so far? <laughs> wow, you don't mince your words. <laughs> How much money have you made in your career so far? Seven pounds. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, I know that, um, how about 
I tell you how much money I made in my like first acting job? I was the Easter Bunny at a garden shop. That was my first acting job. I was like 15 and my mom worked there and she was like, my daughter can do that. Um, I actually don't remember how much money I made, but it wasn't very much. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll skew this question and say, all of us do different things. Um, actors have sometimes survival jobs. Um, I only, or several, I refused to work outside of my profession, so I would only take other acting jobs. So once I was a, a statue at events and parties and stuff like that, and I had to say things like, I was a tree, and I had to say things like, you don't mind if I branch out, do you? Or, have you met my cousin Douglas? Douglas Fur? You know, they couldn't see my face. And one time I was at a party, or I was at this event, and my roommate was there, and he didn't know it was me dressed as, it was his corporate party, and he had no idea it was me. He'd never heard me do this voice before. So uh, the entire night, I had him convinced that I was a psychic tree, and he was like drinking a lot, and he was like, oh. The tree knows things. Anyway, you can have a lot of fun, and I made pretty decent money doing these um, side acting jobs. I'd make like, I don't know, two or three hundred a night doing that. Um, but it was a lot of hard work trying to be still all the time. Here we go. I, uh, I've been acting since uh, professionally since 1989, and in the total I would say it's about $428 million. Uh, though, I got a call yesterday and I have to loan it all to Donald Trump, so. <laughs> I'm surviving, and there's one thing I was told as a young boy by my father. He said to me, one thing, don't ever talk about money. Yeah. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Kind of. Thank you, Elliot. What's your name? Max. Max, what's your question? Well, this is a question for Erica, and are you familiar with Sonic? Or in that case... Yo, Blaze! It's a pleasure to see you today! How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic! That was so good! I'm so impressed! I love that! Ah, thank you very much! And my question to you is... How did you get the role to play as the Dark Magician Girl? Oh, you know what? My memory is not great on this. Dark, I believe, I believe that I was already voicing my, or that they knew me as, as um, Nurse Joy in Pokemon. I believe, I could be wrong, that Nurse, that Dark Magician Girl was an offer. It's very rare to just get an offer. You usually have to audition. But I believe they were just like, Erica has the right timbre for this, and so we're just gonna have her do it. So I believe it was just an offer. And of course I was like, yes. I had no idea how popular that, that character would be at all, but it was a beautiful gift. So thank you for the question. Thank you. Not a problem. Ta-ta for now. Yeah. Yes, more applause for this guy. What's your name? Louisa. Louisa, what's your question? Uh, my, no, no, sorry. Uh, my question is for Craig. Um, I know you from a London soap opera. My other half knows you from your gangster films. And obviously my children know you from your voiceover acting. I'm wondering which one is your favorite? I love films. I went into the business to, to, be, a, to be in movies. And I went to Hollywood when I was 28 years of age. And, landed a Stallone film, Cliffhanger, and it was a small part in a giant movie, but my love has always been watching films from a, a very, very young age. And I've been very, very lucky over the last, it's really picked up these last 10 years with Muscle, Villain, Violent Man, all the, the franchise of the Foot Soldier movies. It's the movies, sorry, I'm, I'm going on, but I love films. Perfect, thank you. What's your name? Darren. What's your question? The uh, question is, if you could pick any character from an anime or video game, what would it be? What are we picking them for? For everyone. If you can pick any character... Pick them for what? To voice. Like our favorite voice? Yeah. No, if you could pick any oh, like character, character oh. who would you voice? Oh, I'm not like that. <laughs> 
steal from anyone else. That's what you're saying, right? I don't know that there's any, I mean, I would say original characters are always what we want. You know what I mean? Like something that's never done before so that we can like sink our teeth into it and make it our own. But if I had to choose something like right now off the top of my head, I would be like a random villain in Scooby-Doo. Or like I would really love to, anybody just like email them and call them and be like, why haven't you hired Erica? I've actually never auditioned for it, but I really, really just, I just want a tiny little, tiny little part. Or maybe Wonder Woman. I think doing something iconic like that would be very exciting. And now I'll do this. Um, anime role, I've always wanted, I wanted to do One Punch, one punch Man so bad. I, wanted to, I was praying that Funimation would get that contract. They didn't get it. Everyone was looking for it. I'm super jealous of everyone that got to be in that. In terms of just voice I would like to have, as someone who has done bad theater, for many years and had to do different accents and dialects, if I could legitimately sound like Craig for five minutes and do that correctly without getting punched by everyone who's actually from London, that would be a goal in my life. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Gideon. Gideon, what's your question? So, for all the anime characters that you've played, which one would you have similarities with? And please do not say Do Flamingo. <laughs> Of the characters you've played, who's the most like you? Who are you? Who, who do you have similarities with among the characters you have played? Um, nice Doflamingo pop ice you have there in your hand. That's lovely. Um, no, uh, there, there's a show called Barakamon that is a lovely, lovely show. It's anime. If you haven't seen it, it is. It is about a artist who gets way too full of himself, starts to think he's important, starts to think he's more important than his art, and then totally loses uh, touch with reality and has to get sent to a small Japanese village to reconnect with his art. So I think him figuring out that like it's not about you, dude, you're a part of something, you're lucky to be part of it, is probably the thing I hope that I've learned the most from. Is like, because you come to this and it's lovely that there's people here that say like, you're so great, you're a big deal. Like, we're not a big deal. We're a part of something that's a big deal and we're super lucky to be here and, and it's easy to forget that. So that would be mine. I love that answer, that's so nice. Um, I think I'm like, have similar traits to a lot of my characters, but um, one, Luffy does come to mind because I'm, my kids make fun of me because my sense of humor is very goofy. It's very physically based. Um, I also have 12 joints that dislocate like, like Luffy. Um, I used to make voices and, and faces in the mirror with my brother growing up. And people used to call me rubber face, which is really interesting. I didn't even think about that until like a couple years ago. I read a review that said, I said called me rubber faced. And so I do this face right here. I do this one. This one is uh, for the Grinch. This is called sideways face, and it's when you're like trying to cheat at school and then the teacher catches you. So anyways, and also I'm very loyal to my friends. I'm very, very friendly, I'm very outgoing, I'm goofy, and I'm very, very, very loyal to my friends. Like don't mess with one of my friends in front of me, because you will see what happens. I'm just kidding. All right, that's for you. That is a very hard question for me because I have my, my choices between you know, um, megalomaniac uh, villains who want to destroy the world or uh, pedophiles and sociopaths. Um, so, hey, they cast me. Oh, that's all I know. But I would say there's a show called Licorice Recoil. Anybody see that? Three people, yes! Uh, I play uh, Shinji in that and uh, very kind of cinematic acting style for the, the that character at least. And uh, he's sexy, David Bowie-like, and you find him in a bar. That's me. I'm in a real sort of mess with that question. <laughs> because I obviously I get to play a lot of, I play a lot of sort of gangstery type blokes. But the nearest one I've played who's like me was Eddie Franks in Villain. Because it was a more of an emotional piece. He had a really lovely heartwarming side to him when he wasn't chopping people up. Thanks for the question. What's your name? Caden. Caden, what's your question? Uh, so, Zoro, what is the main point in his backstory in One Piece? Zoro is the 
backstory one Zorro? Yeah. Who you, is it you? Who's Zorro? I'm X Drake. Uh, the swordsman in One Piece. Green hair. <laughs> yes, some boy. This character I don't know? I, I, I'm going to pass it to someone else who doesn't know. <laughs> I'm going to pass it to someone else who doesn't know. No, I know this story, but we these people know the story better than we are. We're going to pass that to somebody else, because if we haven't played that character, it's not a good place to speak to it. But Also, Greg's just come into this universe. You can't judge him for this. Can I steal your question to ask him a question, follow up? Because we get asked about Zorro, we get asked about this universe a lot, because we some of us have been in it for years and years and years. When did you even find out that One Piece was a thing to get this audition? Like, how much, how much were you aware of any of this world before you stepped into a One Piece role? Yeah, I love that. I, I'll be totally brutally honest, I knew nothing. Absolutely nothing. But they had a problem trying to find this character. And I'd done a movie with Taz. I've said this story a million times. Sorry for boring everybody. But Taz, who played Sanji, was talking to the producers and he said, you know, that we're having trouble finding this guy. Cut a long story short, I did two scenes on tape. They booked me for the role, but I knew nothing about Seth. I knew nothing at all. I just tried to give it what I thought he would be, like a gruff pirate. And it worked. Uh, with a heart. He's another guy with a heart, because he's always crying. Can I ask, because you are, I mean, because you're, a, you're an act, film actor, you put a lot of research into your roles. Did you read the entire manga before you performed this? <laughs> Actually, twice. And, uh, <laughs> I was so impressed, you know, when you discover that world, because I was in, obviously in Cape Town for four and a half months, and you know, you've got, you, you, once you're in it and you're working and you make yourself busy, and you, it's incredible. And what is more, even more incredible is the fan base. It's just mind blowing. So well done to everybody who loved it, who loved the manga, the anime, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's so much of it, isn't it? <laughs> What's your name? Lucia. What's your question? It's not really a question, it's more of a request for my daughter because she's too shy to ask. Um, she was asking if you guys can do your voice acting character with one of your favourite quotes. Yes. Oh. Albert Wesker from Resident Evil, you will give me an egg. <laughs> Ghost from Modern Warfare. Yep. I like to keep this for close encounters. Okay, Let's good. do this. Please fix your hole. I'm gonna have to add this signature laugh afterwards because I almost never do it. So here we go. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. <laughs> and someday I'll tell you the story of how we came up with that laugh. There was a workshop, laugh workshop. Here we go. Uh, Don't let me go. Also does a lot of laughing. But I think my favorite line is, don't worry, I'll kill everyone. <laughs> He's very, he loves his life. Live, laugh, love. That's the Del Flamingo way. Yeah. Great Thank question. you. Do you have questions here? What's your name? Lola. And what's your question? Uh, this one's... This question is for Erica. What's her favourite Pokemon she's ever played? So Erica, what's your favourite Pokemon you've ever played? Oh, I love this question. Um, you know, I have two kids, right? And I can never choose a favourite. But let me give you a couple of my favourite, like a couple of my favourites for, for different reasons. Does that sound good? So I love voicing Sandy the Eevee in um, Pokemon um, Sun and Moon because there was like all these cute little shorts at the beginning. I just really got to dig into the character and I just love the way that Sandy moved and stuff and was all scrappy and friendly with everybody. I also love doing Garboder. Um, people are always surprised that I voice Garboder um, because I decided, I told the director, if I'm gonna play Garboder, Garboder is gonna be dis dis totally disgusted by the way he smells, because he's a giant bag of garbage. So I decided to make him like kind of vomit while he talked, and I really enjoy doing that, because it makes me laugh. And So anything that's kind of comedic, I like. I also love doing Meloetta, because I love to sing. And then maybe a last one would be Levani, because Levani has this unusual, uh, really unusual kind of yodel and voice, and um, 
the director let me go and you know, not be inspired by the original and said, we want to do something really different with this. And so I really enjoyed exploring that. Um, so those are like four of my favorites, but, but who's your favorite? And it doesn't have to be one that I voice to be any Pokemon. Lucario. 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 Oh, that's a good one. Thank you so much for the question, sweetheart. Erica, could you do one Pokemon for her? I wish I'm not allowed to. Oh! But if you come to my table, maybe I will. Yes. Thank you, hon. Hey, what's your name? Neeraj. Neeraj, what's your question? So, uh, my question is, I'm sure you all love your careers very much, but if you were to pick a different stream, let's say uh, you were hit by a truck and you were reborn into a different world, what would you be? Uh, actor? <laughs> uh, if, we were, if, we were, if we weren't able to be an actor, what other thing would we do in life that we could fill us? Have you, have you discovered your inner chef love now that you've played this role? <laughs> Anyone? I have a couple of ideas. Do you, uh, you want to answer first? Uh, I would be a, a visual effects guy who would be also worried about AI taking his job now. <laughs> I always dreamt of, um, if I wasn't an actor and if I had the talent, I would love to have been a pro golfer. So, oh. you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, that takes a lot, a lot of oomph. I just, I just love the image of you as a pro golfer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I love. I have so many things I love to do, but they are all related to the arts. So, a writer, a creator, a director, um, um, a visual artist. I did. You know, I love to draw and paint and sculpt. Uh, anything having to do with art. Uh, you know, uh, maybe um, a singer. Um, I, I, I did Broadway, so I do sing, but maybe a totally different path. My daughter is an amazing songwriter, like incredible. So um, I, it's going to be exciting watching her. I think that's what she's going to do. Like, I think she's going to be a singer songwriter. So anything, anything having to do with arts, I would honestly take any job. I would even do special effects because anything that anything that it helps create art to me is, is the most amazing thing in the world. This is for you, Donna. I. I think if I couldn't do something in the arts, like so much of what we do is you throw some work out into it and it goes into the void. You don't have a lot of control over where it goes, how the movie gets edited, how the project goes, if it's received, if anybody sees it. And a lot of times it's six to eight months to a year later that anything happens. I would love to be like a landscaper that just went and like planted a row of boxwood. And then at the end of the day, there's the row of boxwood. And they're like, does this look good? Does this hedge look good? Like, yeah, Rob, that's a good hedge. Come back tomorrow and you can plant something else. Like that, that direct line and easy approval and the, the end of the day thing. Yeah, just planting. I'd even like just work at a B&Q in the garden center and help just plant things. That would be great. That would be great. Great question. Hi, Mario. What's your real name? Logo. Logo. What's your question? What is your worst character that you had to do? The worst character we had to do. Did you say worst or first? Worst. Worst. We want all the dirt guys. Oh. All right. I did a show called Blood Sea. Uh, that was this really sweet guy. He was like this nice, I'm spoiling this by the way, if you are about to watch it, I'm sorry, but this sweet next door neighbor who's helping this young lady and like her parents aren't around much and he's like this kind of uncle-like figure that helps her and protects her all the way through and I really liked him and I'm like, oh, this is sweet. He's a good guy, he's a positive male role model. In episode 12, you find out he's the serial killer. <laughs> And I was personally offended because I really liked him and I felt like I had been played on. So that was, that was probably the worst for me, is playing a bad guy that I thought was a good guy. <laughs> Luckily, I've not had to do that. I've played most of the people I wanted to do. Uh, what a boring answer, but I'm so sorry. I can't make it up. <laughs> I was trying to vamp uh, 
uh, in my head. I, uh, that's a hard question. Because first off, uh, when you say like worst character, I think of like, like the characters were horrible people. Well, that's everything I get cast in. Um, and then I say, okay, so what one was horrible for me to have to perform? And it's like, I'm just glad to be working. So <laughs> really, I guess I would have to say Asriel and Blaz Blaze Blue because it, it, oh, this is such a mixed young audience, I can't say things. Um, but he's, no, but you, if you know Blaze Blue and you know, and you know Asriel, you understand. It's, he's all about three things, uh, and one of them's food. <laughs> uh, and also it trashed my voice having to do that character. I, I don't know, I, I did a reading, um, I, as an actor, if you do theater, you do tons of uh, readings and workshops of, of pieces, and most of the things I worked on I love, but there was this one piece at, at, when I, at NYU that I worked on that was the story of Hedda Gabler, and the music was just, now I'm gonna feel bad if this person sees it, but I don't think they're in the business anymore. I would be shocked if they were. Uh, <laughs> songs went nowhere and they were really funny and there was um and there was a scene at the end that made no sense where someone came in with a 12 foot uh, again mixed audience but it was it was technical they came in with a box this big and it was a 12 foot whale penis that this character had uh, had harpooned and it wasn't supposed to be funny I, and it wasn't supposed to be funny, okay? How do you get through that scene when this is a dramatic scene and where something like that happens? So there was one other actor and I that were in a, in a lot of musical theater together, and he and I got cast in this show together, and we would just sit there in rehearsals and go like this. Like we were shaking as we were laughing so hard at how ridiculous some of the lines were. Anyway, that's my story. Probably the worst thing I was ever in and it had an interesting thing come um, on stage. I had this idea just because it's a callback to two other questions and also your question, but the side act, the jobs that you have to have as an actor to try to survive. You asked about the money. Early Funimation paid $25 an hour, no residual for dubbing. Um, so you couldn't live on that. So all the side jobs, and you talked about all the other side jobs you had to have. I talked about how much I wish I could do a real accent. I was paid to be Dr. Bombay in a pith helmet and safari shorts and walk around the bars of Dallas, Texas as a 20 year old handing out shots of Bombay gin. Shots of gin are terrible. <laughs> and walk to tables in a fake British accent and tell the story of Dr. Bombay. I remember in 1404 when we did, it was awful, no scripts, we were supposed to improvise, I couldn't do an accent to save my life, and the only people less interested in talking to you in a pith helmet and shorts than the women in bars in Dallas, Texas, are the men with the women in bars who you're trying to steal attention from. It was not a good gig, that was my worst role. Not anime related. So guys, do you have any tips to give out to aspiring voice actors, like where to get started? My tip is always be an actor first and then worry about where you're gonna execute that. Don't be a voice actor, don't just be a film actor. Like, learn to act, get on stage, get in a class, do some improv, whatever you wanna do, but don't try to say this is the end goal. I wanna learn to act, I wanna learn to be a storyteller, I wanna learn to live and inhabit in my body. Do that first and then see if that can lead you to voice over to other kinds of acting. That's the first step I always say. That, exactly what he said. And here's the thing, um, if you don't have money, okay, you don't have money to invest in classes, you can start somewhere, you know? You do community theater, because you, if you, you just need some time. Amdram? Oh, do Amdram. But where, you know, where I'm from, they call it community theater. Um, if you're still in school, do the school play. Do the school play, do the school musical. That's where often we learn to act. That's how we start acting. And and just because, you know, just because it's a, a drama teacher teaching you does not mean they don't have incredible insights to give you. And you can take your skills from a bunch of different people. Never treat any one person as godly. Never. Because you can learn from everyone around you and no one person can say to you, this is the only way to do it. 
because there are always many different ways to do it. And I use different techniques for every single thing that I do. I don't ever use the same bunch of skill sets for each role because every role requires something different. So take classes, take lots of classes and get on stage. Get on the stage. And as a side thing, maybe learn how to do really well GPT prompting for AI. That's yeah, it's killing me being on the end because uh, <laughs> basically I'm going to just repeat what he just said. But uh, yeah, just try and act. But I do think, you know, being a voice actor, become an actor first. Because from what I know is the best voice actors are actors, you know, first. Um, yeah, just keep acting. Do what you can. Believe in yourself. School plays, and dram, or everything you said. What's your name? Vlad. Vlad, what's your question? Uh, would you be with us on a karaoke tonight? What to, I, you have to come and see. If, oh, I, for, if they have the song, I'll do it, and you'll have to come and see. I, I can't spoil it, but it's I'm really good. <laughs> Is that weird? Because um, I think it's because I was a professional singer and it feels weird. It just feels weird. But I did it once and I sang Jose Carreras do, um, doing <laughs> West Side Story because when I heard the recording, I died of laughter. I thought it was one of the funniest things I ever heard because he's not supposed to have an accent at all. Um, he's, the, he's the American in the group. He's not the Puerto Rican one. And so he has this really strong Italian accent and he, he says stuff like, Los could be there. Something to right away. I will know right away. Soon as he chose, making the other guy clean the right as a rope. Oh. I didn't understand a single word he said, but he was speaking in English, and I just love the way that he articulated. And also, I, I I'm drawn to voicing uh, boys and men. I. And so, yeah, Sesame Street, I liked all the male puppets. That was like my obsession. So that's what I would do. I'd never sing as me, I'd sing as somebody else. What are you going to sing tonight, Blood? I'm staying all night there. What are you going to sing? Yeah, if you will, I will as well. <laughs> okay. I am not a singer, and I have been asked by several environmental causes not to subject any humans to that. Uh, to that. Great question, thank you. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Gawthon. What's your question? Uh, what is the most evil character you've ever played? Uh -huh. Well, it's funny you would ask me that while wearing those glasses, <laughs> which are excellent, my might add, but yeah. Don Flamingo is by far the, the most pure evil yeah, case okay. of, and it is, it's a one piece, it's actually a one piece question for the first time in a while. That's good, we're back on target. Um, is my favorite villain and also the most evil villain because he is a pure agent of chaos. I was very afraid that he was gonna get like a Reiner, tragic backstory where we realized he was wrongly done and it's brought to this place. I played a lot of heroes that have reasons, really good reasons for why they are where they are. Like kind of, Craig's played some of these guys that are like, yeah, they're in a villainy place, but they started somewhere else and became that kind of a human, especially with the gangster films. But yeah. Dolph Flamingo is just evil. He loves evil. He likes killing people. He likes being an agent of chaos. And, and I think that's why I like him is because there's no, sac there's no softening him. It's nobody's fault but his own. I'm not sure, but one that is coming to mind and it's kind of lovable evil. Did anybody ever see um, Secret Magic Control Agency? It was on Netflix. Um, it's like a it's like a, um, a take on Hansel and Gretel. Anyway, I played Elvira, and she was like a. a a plump Marilyn Monroe, and she would um, make people fall in love with her by giving, by baking them cookies. <laughs> I just loved the role so much; it was so much fun, and she was very like dynamic, and I don't know, I just enjoyed it. Uh, my <clears throat> most of my repertoire again is all evil, so that's very hard. Uh, so I will actually go back on a timeline. And everybody know Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Well, the first video game that they did was in 2000, and it was my very first video game job, and the, the actor who played the master from the TV show thought uh, video games were beneath him, so he, he wouldn't come out to do it, so I got the gig, and I got to do the master of that. I would say he's a pretty evil character. Yeah. 
that's an easy one, the most evil character I've ever played is in a movie at the moment, it's a black and white art house film. Gerard Johnson, award winning director, it's called Muscle. Black and white, and I play a bisexual, psychopathic mercenary, manipulating, dark, terrifying, brutal character. I mean, when I say brutal, he's up there. Muscle, check it out.